Hello, and welcome to Down the Scope. In this video, we're going to be looking at the histology of the dermis, glands associated with the skin and the subcutis, essentially mopping up all of the extras we haven't covered in the first two videos on the epidermis and hair follicles. The dermis is the area from the epidermal basement membrane to the subcutaneous adipose tissue. Histologically, it's not too interesting. You'll see lots of bundles of fibrillar eosinophilic material with a few cell nuclei dotted around. These are collagen bundles and the fibrocytes that produce them and maintain them. You'll find scattered blood vessels, sometimes with some inflammatory cells clustered around them, usually lymphocytes and plasma cells, but you might be able to find a few mast cells which tend to be a bit larger and have more granular cytoplasm. In some areas, you'll see small nerves as well that are going towards the epidermis. The dermis separates the adnexal structures, including hair follicles, but there are a few other glands that you'll be able to see. In domestic animals, most of the glands you'll see are apocrine glands. These are lined by simple cuboidal epithelium and are often associated with hair follicles. In most mammals, they secrete oily substances that act as pheromones. These substances are generally odorless at the point of secretion, but are then broken down on the skin by microbes to produce a smell. In some animals, they can be more abundant as they have a role in thermoregulation, producing secretions that act like sweat to cool the skin by evaporation. Another type of dermal gland are eccrine glands. These are sweat glands that participate in thermoregulation. They can only be found in the pore pads and noses of non-primate mammals. In contrast to the apocrine glands, they are more coiled and longer, often reaching into the deep dermis or superficial subcutis. Again, the epithelium is simple cuboidal, but the cells appear a bit more vacuolated with slightly clearer cytoplasm. Characteristically, the ducts have a double layer of epithelium. Humans have an exceptionally high density of eccrine glands throughout the skin, as we are a very sweaty species compared to the rest. There are a few other types of glands that you'll be able to find in different anatomic locations. First, there are the modified sebaceous glands that are present around the tail and anus of dogs. These are the hepatoid glands, so-called because their abundant pink cytoplasm makes them look a lot like hepatocytes. They are often more abundant in uncastrated male dogs. There are also a couple of modified apocrine glands in different anatomic locations. In the ear canal, ceruminous glands look very similar to apocrine glands, but will produce cerumen or earwax. Dogs also have modified apocrine glands around the anus, known as the anal glands. These produce an oily secretion which is deposited onto feces as it squeezes past, producing a unique odour that marks territory. The subcutis is about as interesting as the dermis, but for completeness we can discuss it briefly. Most of the subcutis is made up of adipose tissue, with large fat cells filled with lipid that appear as clear space. In some areas, you'll also have subcutaneous muscles, particularly in samples from the trunk where the muscle is used to move the skin, such as uh, the twitching that you'll see in herbivores as a response to flies. In the subcutis, there are much larger blood vessels and nerve bundles, which will be sending off smaller branches into the dermis towards the epidermis. So that's just a quick roundup of the remaining structures in the skin that we didn't mention in the first two videos. If you have any questions or would like to suggest a histology topic for future videos, please leave a comment below and I'll get back to you. Otherwise, thanks very much for watching and until next time, goodbye.